hi guys welcome to part 5 of the videos I'm creating under the title Zinc Ultrascale Plus and Beta Linux in these recent videos I'm trying to show how one can communicate with SPI, I2C and GPIO interfaces inside the PL and also the PS they are, the ideas will be very similar uh, within Peta Linux, okay. And in previous video, I showed you the Vivado designs that we have for ZCU102 and for the ZTERN board. And now in this video, I'm going to show you how we build the Peta Linux, okay. So <coughs> from Vivado project, we obtained the HDF file, the hardware definition file. And in this video, we are basically going to use Petalinux create to create a Petalinux project. Then we are going to use Petalinux configure first to read the HDF file that we have obtained from Vivado. And then again, I use Petalinux configure to customize the root file system of Petalinux. And Later in the next video when I'm talking about adding the functionality for SPI again I will use Peta Linux configure to customize the Linux kernel and also I will show you in the next video how to customize the device tree okay so these are all needed to be done then we have Peta Linux build which basically builds the Peta Linux for us and then we have Peta Linux package which creates the boot.bin okay so in this video I'm going to go through these steps one by one and we build a complete Peta Linux and we do the customization for the root file system and in the next video I will do the customization that we need for the kernel so let's go ahead with our steps so here I have I'm basically all of my project files the Vivado folder is the project that I have, the Vivado project I have for ZCU102. The ZTERN design folder is all of the design files related to the ZTERN board. When you, you basically do a fair donation to googlear.com, then you will have access to all of these files. In these videos, I will try to show, you, show them in detail. However, in some parts, I may skip the content of the file. When you have access to the files, obviously, you will ha have complete access to the contents of all of the files. Okay, so here I have a Peta Linux folder. And previously, I have, be I have done uh, the entire flow. I have a complete Linux. Um, for this video, I'm going to start a new Peta Linux project here. And I will do all of the steps one by one. So we stop. We start from the um, from an empty command prompt. The first thing, obviously, you do is you you source the, your Peta Linux uh, setting script, which, as of the previous videos, you know we we install the Peta Linux here in this address. So this is the script. Then I come to this folder and then the first step is I need to start a new Peta Linux project. This is being done by Peta Linux create and as you issue the Peta Linux create command um, there's a complete help message which shows you how to use it and basically what we want to do is exactly one of the examples all I, I want to do is just to start a new project for my Zinc Ultra Scale Plus target and for the project name I select Linux 2 okay so now that we look we have a Linux this is what I had previously and now I have Linux 2 and this is our new Peta Linux project okay so we we go inside the next step is I need to give 
the Petalinux, the HDF file, the HDF file that I have obtained from Vivado project. And the HDF file, as I told you, is the file that contains the complete description of your hardware. It contains basically the information how the PS is configured, what peripherals are present, which peripherals are active, which ones are not active, what are the configurations for, let's say, DRAM controller, which interrupt lines are used, what peripherals are present in the PL. So all of this information is in the HDF file. So using Petalinux config, Petalinux config, you can uh, you can give Petalinux um, the the HDF file. Okay, so here is a is again the help description of the Petalinux config, and here the one that I need right now is is the get hardware description option. Okay, so we go ahead and we issue Petalinux config with get hardware description and where is the HDF file? The HDF file is inside my Vivado folder inside the SDK folder. This is the HDF file that we exported in previous video using export hardware in Vivado and this is the file I'm going to use right now. Okay, so I try to issue the Petalinux config command. Petalinux config then here get hardware description I'm lazy no that doesn't work description and uh, what we need to do is to give him the address for the HDF file I think it should be something like this guy let's see if this works okay so now that i issue this command what petalinux does is it it looks inside the folder it looks if there is any hdf file and as you see it has copied it has it has grabbed the hdf file copied into system.ehf that hdf sorry and then um and then petalinux starts uh, generating the files that contain all of the impo important configuration data okay and it also allows you to further customize the key settings of your petalinux project okay and at the moment i don't want to change anything so changes we will do later i just go ahead and allow the petalinux to generate all of the file to do all of the tasks that it needs to do before we start building the project um, so I pause the video because this may take a little bit time okay so Petalinux config is done and um, and basically the next step is I should issue uh, Petalinux build okay however um, there are a set of customization you need to do before you issue Petalinux build um, and I want to show you one of them which is important it's um, we want to have a, we want to be able to have basically I2C communication possibility okay so as I have shown you we have I2C peripheral in our PL and I want to be able to talk to this I2C interface okay now one solution is I develop an application which opens the I2C node and then it starts writing and reading data another solution which is uh, very handy and many people use it in the industry is using I2C tools okay and this is a simple Linux package I2C tools which allows you to perform basic I2C operations like basic I2C write, read, write mu multiple data, scan the I2C bus. So this is a very useful package. And the root file system that I produce for Peta Linux right now, I want the root file system to contain this I2C tools package. Okay. So what I want to do right now, 
I want to customize the, the root file system of Peta Linux. You know, so how do I do that? Um, again, if you if you issue Peta Linux config with the help, and yeah, I want just to show you. So if I issue Peta Linux config with the help, this this is basically the command that I need to issue now because what I want to do, I want to customize the set of packages, the files that I have on the root file system of my Peta Linux. And this is something we will also do in future. Let's say in future, we need to enable the um, window management system. You know, we need to enable the graphics interface. Then again, the root file system needs to be updated. So this is the e command that we issue now and we are being provided with a very easy to use user interface uh, through which I can say which packages I want to have inside my Peta Linux root file system and which packages I don't. Okay, and specifically I'm looking for um, I2C tools and as far as I remember it's inside the base okay and inside the base here we have i2c tools and i need to basically enable i2c tools so that peta linux adds builds and adds i2c tools to my root file system as you see there are a large number of packages that you can add to your uh, peta linux root file system based on your own um, your own need based on what you want to do um, and some of them are very interesting you know so some of them um, they are very useful and you may you may not think they are there but they are there present and you can very easily add them um, yeah that takes time if you want to go through them so for now the one which we really needed this i2c tools I have already added and I go ahead exit 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 and I want to save the new um, the new configuration I did and so now it's a good time to uh, issue the beta Linux build command so one point is now uh, we will have a beta Linux we will have a Linux that we can put on this u102 and it will come up okay and with that we should be able to communicate with our i2c device however we won't be able to communicate with spi device um, in order to be able to communicate with the spi device we need to further customize the kernel so um, the modules that appear inside the kernel needs to be customized also i need to customize the device tree and these are steps I do in the next video so for now I go ahead with Peta Linux build which is the process in which um, we build all of the the kernel image uboot FSBL PMU firmware the main root file system all of them will be built here and here just one small note you need a network connection for this to work fine okay so this this takes maybe I don't know five minutes it can take very long ba based on what you have done here okay I think for our very simple system five minutes I will again pause the recording come back to you when it's done so one a small point during building the Peta Linux, I have these error messages, and they are very common because when you are building Peta Linux, um, you need huge disk space. Okay, so and what, make sure you have enough disk space, disk space before you continue building. I will do that again. I will run the build process. And fortunately, we will have the complete images. Okay, so I just free up some space and then issue the Peta Linux build command again. Okay. All right. So finally, the build is finished, and we have one warning that I think is not important. 
so now all of the output files they are located inside images Linux so what I have here inside images Linux is arm trusted firmware then basically the image which contains the um, the u-boot image let's call it the u-boot image and kernel and root file system platform management unit firmware so these are these are all important we will use them and you have directly the root fs itself if you want to open it and see what what's the content um however root fs is also present here so basically this is one of the files that we copy to the sd card and our root fs is here and that's enough for us compile device tree master uboot kernel fsbl um, so now um, what I need to do so some what I need I don't need this file because it's again present here um, what we need to do is to create the boot.bin and to create the boot.bin we will need uh, a set of these files the, also I need the beta stream from the Vivado project so the boot.bin will contain our FSPL platform management unit and also the beta stream from Vivado project arm trusted firmware and also uboot so these guys they will go inside the boot.bin so there is a command petalinux package which create for us the boot.bin file okay and once the boot.bin is generated then the boot.bin and image.ub they go to the sd card and there's our running linux complete running linux so i need to run better linux package and give him the addresses for all of these files i have previously done this so i just paste it here better linux package um, the, the address for fsbl and we are creating basically the boot.bin file the address for fsbl the address for beta stream i hope this address is correct we will see then who is pmview firmware and then we are telling him also include the uboot and we are telling him if there exists a boot.bin file just overwrite it so i just press enter okay so now what i have is the boot.bin file and all i need to bring up my linux are these two files so boot.bin file image.ub file you take a sd card let's say a two gigabytes sd card and just go ahead and simply format it with fat fat 32 file system and just put the files there these two files put them inside your zc1 put the sd card inside your zc102 make sure the um, deep switches are set correctly so that the board comes up from the sd card just turn on the board you should have a running linux so now um, our task for building Petal Linux is not complete yet we need to update the kernel because I want to have also the SPI working so I need to update the kernel I do this in the next video I also need to update the device tree um, and I want also to create a custom application that talks to the SPI device okay so in the next video I will do these three tasks and then we will have a complete Linux that we run on this SU102 board. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.